Hey guys, welcome to another VETSIM video here on the FS2004 AVH Pro channel. Today we're going to take a look at how to fill in and file the IFR flight plan. Actually, it's very simple. I'm going to do it via Scorkbox. You can do also do it via the VETSIM website, but it should also almost be the same. Um, the first thing we're going to do, of course, I'm connected already. Uh, we're going to start and we're going to click on flight plan. And here we have a flight plan sheet for our uh, flights from Amsterdam to Prague. Um, so let's go uh, through this uh, section step by step. First of all, flight type. Of course, we're going to be flying IFR, so select IFR. The departure airport, very simple, Amsterdam. And the arrival airport, Prague. Alternate airport, this is the airport where you want to go if you can't land at Prague uh, due to weather or anything. Um, well, let's pick an airport in the Czech Republic, Brno, for example choose any airport uh, near your d original destination uh, so you can always uh, deviate from your destination if necessary. The departure time also very simple it's in Zulu time um, UTC time as you can see so we uh, uh, after the time we're gonna put in this Zulu meaning that we're gonna be using the Zulu time you always have to do this because in the aviation world we're always using pseudo time. So let's say it's now 10.35 uh, local time here in the Netherlands. Let's say we want to depart at 11.15. Uh, currently it's UTC plus 2. It's summer so it's UTC plus 2 in the Netherlands. So that means it's um, 9.15 Zulu our departure time. So it's very simple. And uh, let's go to the next section, the en route flight time. This is the flight time uh, of your flight. It's uh, very simple, of course. Uh, we're going to be flying about 1 hour and 30 minutes. You probably have to do a little a bit of ca calculation for this. But um, uh, let's go to the next section, fuel available. This is the amount of fuel we have available in our airplane. You always need to take a little bit of extra fuel with you. In case of a diversion, or if you need to be, uh, if you need to go in a holding pattern, for example, if it's very busy, uh, let's say we're gonna have 45 minutes of fuel extra with us, so that means two hours and 15 minutes of fuel available. The cruising speed, uh, of course, this depends on what aircraft type you're using. We're gonna be using the Boeing 737, so let's say 430 knots in true airspeed. Cruising altitude this is the uh, altitude you're going to be flying at. Um, now, this is imp quite important. Um, the general rule here, at least in Europe, is if you're going to fly to the west, you're going to need an even fly level. And if you're going to fly to the east, you're going to need an odd fly level. Now, if you're not sure whether you have the correct fly level, for example, in France, uh, the rules are a bit different. Um, Take a look at a real world flight, for example, uh, on flight radar 24. You can um, see a lot of airplanes flying uh, the route you're going to be flying to and see what they're using in the real world so you can know whether you need to use an even or an odd flight level. So in this case, we're going to fly to the uh, east and that means we're going to need an odd flight level. So let's say flight level 390. Um, voice capabilities, um, this means uh, so the controller knows whether you can uh, send and receive voice, whether you want to uh, receive voice only or whether you're a text only pilot. Of course I can strongly recommend to be a voice sent and receive pilot because that makes it a lot easier and a lot more fun. Uh, the call sign, you can change this, uh, this is already um, entered uh, when we logged in on Squawkbox. If you're heavy, uh, depending on the aircraft type, you have to tick this box uh, so the air, uh, the air traffic controllers know whether you are heavy, which means, um, uh, if for example, they have to put more time in between uh, you departing and an uh, airplane behind you. But I guess this case, we're Boeing 737, we're not categorized as heavy. Aircraft cap capabilities, um, it's not really necessary to fill this in. Um, this just means what is your aircraft capable of. Um, 
take a look through this list. Um, I guess the Boeing 737 is this one, but as I said before, it's not really necessary to uh, select this one. Uh, the route, um, I already discussed this in this in the previous video. Um, we're gonna need a route, and I used the same uh, route in the previous video, as you can see here. I'm just gonna copy that and put that in here. And then any additional comments, uh, whether you're a newbie, for example, you can always enter that here so the air traffic controllers know um, that you're new and that you're probably gonna um, need the air traffic controller to speak more slowly, for example. So these are the uh, this is a section where I can post any additional comments for the controller. And that's it. Uh, we have now filled in the entire fly plan. So give it a little review before you uh, uh, send your fly plan. You can fly IFR, you can depart from Amsterdam, arrival airport is Prague, alternate airport is Brno. Departure time is 9.15 Zulu, it's 11.15 Zulu, 11.50 local time. New route flight time 1 hour and 30 minutes, fuel available 2 hours and 50 minutes. Cruising speed 430 knots at true airspeed. Cruising altitude flight level 390, we're gonna fly to the east, so we're gonna use an odd flight level. We're gonna be a voice and send and receive pilot. Uh, this we can change, we already did that. Uh, aircraft capability is not applicable. And our routes, we've copied that from VET routes, it's valid, and any additional comments right here. So we've correctly filled in our flight plan, and all we have to do now is send your flight plan. And as you can see, Squawkbox says, uh, flight plan is sent, and it means the edge of controllers have received your flight plan, and you're ready to go. So guys, that's how you file an IFR flight plan, and I hope this video helps you out. Um, hope to see you next time on another VETSIM video, and take care.